Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about data files. This is what we have discussed so far that a Oracle server consists of an instance and a file systems and there are different types of files in the file system and those different types of common files are like this. And in this video, essentially, we are going to discuss about data files. All right. So, data files are are, the, are those files where your data are where your data are eventually going to be stored. Say, for example, I am going to write a insert insert statement where I am inserting into let's say my table T. Insert into table. Say, let's say table T. Okay. and I'm going to insert some values like 1, A, B, C and so on. So these are called data and these data are going to be stored in a file and that file is called a data file. Okay, So 1, A, B, C and so on. So whatever I'm the way that I'm shown is not, not like that. You may have thousands of data files. All right. And inside that data file, you may have one data file may consist of two gigabyte of space. So, how you are going to organize this number of data files, and how data are going to be organized inside a data file? That's what we are going to learn in this video. Okay. So, for example, in my system, I am. I, my data files are something like this. So essentially, these are my different files, out of which I have Apex, this one, Sysox, System, and Users.dbf are the example of data files. This is a control file, this is a temporary file, and this is undo file. We are going to discuss those things in our next videos. But in this video, we are going to discuss how these data files are going to be managed. All right. So this is how. So this is what we what we are going to going to learn here, is that how how to organize this data file, and how data how data are organized inside the files. So let's start with a very simple example. Whenever you do say create. table T and say a number. This is a very simple SQL statement which is a DDL. I am trying to create a table T. What this is going to do is that whenever I want to create a table T, I am going to Oracle is going to create a storage unit and that storage unit is called segment. That means for any object that is going to have going to going to consume some storage, one segment must be created for that. Okay. So table T and this is double T's segment. And this segment will have an initial size that is also given at the time of create table statement. In this case, I have not given those parameters. If I do not give those parameters, then Oracle is going to take a default parameter. Let's say, assume that default parameter in our fictitious case is 2 MB. That means a space will be allocated, a 2 MB space will be allocated for the data which is going to be inserted to this table T. Let's say this is 2 MB. Okay. So this is the storage segment. Nothing segment is nothing but a storage unit. Then what we're saying that this these segments contain multiple extents. That means you can think this segment as let's say two extents. Again, I'm assuming that one, and each extent is of one MB. Okay. So, these are called extents. Okay. 
so these are called extents so in this case this segment is consist of two extents and extents is basically a contiguous space allocation this one mb is contiguous then the second extent may be near the first extent or may not or may be very far away from the first extent so the the things is that inside ex, inside the extent the memory allocation is contiguous but there is no such things that the extents should be near to each other okay they may be you know far away then these extents are consist consist of things called block that means inside that extends what we have is the blocks okay so so what it what we what we told that whenever we are going to create a table a segment will be created and a segment is consist of multiple extends and extends are contiguous space allocation and extent is consist of number of blocks so first is segment segment is consist of multiple extents and the lowest unit is blocks okay so let's discuss what is there inside a block so your block is going to look like this okay the block is going to look like this it has a you know a space allocated in inside the block that is called header okay or this is called block header so header typically contains what type of block is this right this means is this block we are going to store table data or inside this block we are going to store index data or inside this block we are going to have a pl sql procedure okay so what kind of what kind of data this block is going to store we put that as a header so header tells me types of block number 2 if there is any transaction that is going on right now that means let's say this is a um, table table block and then for that table i'm let's say doing an update that means i am currently on a transaction so transaction information then number 3 is that where this block is located in a disk because finally this block is going to be in the hard drive right so address on disk then we have some space allocated and that space allocated for called table directory this is an optional space if this block is a table block then it contains the name of the table whose data are there inside this block then number 3 is going to contain row di row directory so let me just write in another color so it's going to contain row directory so that means like in this in this block essentially what we have we have some data let's say we have one row here second row here and so and so on okay so what is the row address so what is the address of this row those things are going to be stored in the row directory so this is a fast address and what about the address is this this is going to be stored here that means from here i can point to this row from here i can be pointer to this row and so on so row directory contains the address of the rows that is exist in this block then we have data like those king or like you now whenever we are going to insert that one in our first example and what about those data is are going to be stored here in forms of row then i have some empty space those empty space i just kept this thing for some future updates 
or if you want to insert and so on okay these three together the header table directory and row directory called block overhead essentially block is is block is, is, is one where we store data and then inside this in the, in the block overhead we store metadata about what things are going to be stored inside that block okay so if this thing is now somehow clear that let's go back to our previous slide so that so we whenever we do a create table i and then this is how it is going to happen right then all these segments extends and block they are put together in a container and that container is called table space okay so so table space is something which contains all the segments extends and all this thing so let's take an another example let's say i have a table t1 table t2 then I have index i1 and index i2 and so on so whenever i create table t1 i will give i will i will give what is the table space that i'm going to have this table t1 okay so let's say the table space is ta so this is our table space and ta right so so this is a table space ta so i'm telling that t1 is a part of table ta that means a segment will be created inside here and that is t1 so t1 table or let's say t1 table segment name is s1 okay and table t2 is again is going to be part of table ta so therefore this is table t2's segment s2 and then similarly index i1 segment index i2 segment this segment is basically essentially consist of what consist of number of extents and number of extents inside in, in in terms consist of multiple blocks then what we say that this table space a is associated with this file called one dot dbf or whatever you are seeing here in my case say sys ox dot dbf or users dot dbf right so what you are saying that users dot dbf is a physical file and are you seeing table space you are not going to see this is a logical structure okay so what we are saying is that users dbf whatever you are seeing the physical structure visualize those things that users dbf may be a part of a table space ta okay then what you are doing that table space is basically a container and it's going to contain multiple segments and multiple extents and so on let's say if this is a this is a this is a this is a case then what we have we are trying to insert into t1 we want to insert into t1 some values okay so whenever you insert into t1 so t1 is basically part of this segment s1 and inside that s1 we have a extent e1 and inside that extent e1 we have a block called say b1 okay so this is a block b1 which have the overhead and then some place to store data so to start with all these things are empty because just i just created table t1 i don't have an insert so whenever i insert into t1 let's say i insert first value then what essentially i am doing i am filling this area in the block that means I'm filling the extent that means I'm filling the segment what is happening actually actually there is some data is being stored in users.dbf that's all and then how we are visualizing that we are visualizing that one in this all this thing why you are doing that that's a different things for that okay that's a you know we need to visualize in this way so that things will be much easier in later on okay so here is a here's a case so whenever I'm going to insert into table t1 something happen then I'm I'm going to insert another row then here another row is created eventually this block is going to be full when the when, when this block this block is going to be filled then we have one block in that extent is filled 
I'm keep I'm, I'm keep writing this insert okay so I'm just still you know keep going on inserting then what I'm going to eventually I'm going to fill the extent okay so what we started we started that whenever we have created table t1 we have 2 MB segment and there are 2 1 MB extent and we just filled right now one extent then we have another extent somewhere there because to start with we have 2 MB right two extents then we, we are still inserting so we are going to fill this extent so we are filling extent means you are filling blocks that means you are consuming place in this user.dbf file let's say this user.dbf is 2 gigabyte so we are now consume only 2 megabyte then after consuming 2 megabyte we have we have completed we have completely filled the two initial extent that has started while creating this table t1 then what's going to happen oracle then for next insert i don't have any space in my existing extent so what oracle is going to do it is going to create another extent automatically for you that means another that means a lot of blocks that means a lot of areas where I, I can keep inserting then I can keep insert so let's say we assume this thing that this is a table space so we are we are basically you know we are still we are keep inserting so let's assume that you know in you know once this extent extent is filled we are going to fill another 1 MB so we are completely filled right now 3 MB eventually what we are writing we are writing to this file users.dbf the dbf initially started with 2 gigabyte and initially well, after this operation after 3 extent i consumed 3 mb that means i have left with 2 2 gigabyte minus 3 mb of space but eventually if i am going to insert eventually i am going to consume all this 2 gigabyte if i am consume consumed all this 2 gigabyte the the, the dbf the, the file is completely full that means I have multiple extents so on I have created and, and then you know and, and so on in, inside that segment okay inside that segment I have multiple extents created and then basically I, I, I filled all this 2 gigabyte then if I want to still insert then whenever I am going to allocate a new extent it's going to give me an error because I do not have any physical files anymore in that case what you can do you can add another data file to this table space TA that means you put some new disk to your machine and then you create another file say called user 1.dbf so what you're going to do you are going to have another data file called users 1.dbf you associate that to your table space TA let's say here is another 2 gigabyte right then same thing you know if the insert is still going on so I'm going to keep filling this user one dot tpf, and then so on. I can I can add and uh, and do whatever I want to, and to I want to achieve. So this is how your you know data files are arranged. How data inside the data file being arranged. So let's sum, let's summarize everything right now. So basically, what we are talking is that the the minimum unit of storage is a block and multiple block consist of an extent and multiple extent together consist something called a segment we have one segment for each database storage object and all these things together put into a container that is container is called table space okay and table space is associated with a data file another thing that one table space can also consist of many data files and that data files we can add dynamically whenever whenever we are finished with, with the when, when you filled the complete the, the, the existing data files this is what we are seeing is called logical storage structure logical storage whatever you are seeing in this side is a physical storage okay again 
this physical storage can be a cooked file system that means whatever I show you right now this is a cooked file system on the DBF basically I'm um, this operating system file system okay or it can be directly lie on the disk that's called direct access or it can be an ASM based file system or it can be a cluster file system don't worry about this thing we have given you example here to the cooked file system we are going to build on all the other things in the in the next chapters but from user point of view it does not matter how what kind of physical storage you know what kind of file structure is, is that but from user point of view it matters that is stored in this this logical structure and whatever applicable with the cooked file system all those things are applicable for other other things so essentially don't worry about the different how this is physically stored but understand what is the idea the rationale behind data files thank you